Well, I have to say this about Rampage last night. Good. Pretty damn good. Again, I keep talking about it because it is. It's so nice. Have a show you only have to watch for an hour, especially when you just watch two hours of SmackDown. But this week's Rampage was pretty damn good. It was a very easy watch, and it was like I blinked and I damn near felt like I missed the show, even though I just watched it because it went by so quickly. And when I look at wrestling sometimes, like that to me as much as anything is when you can gauge that a show is hitting a mark. It's how quickly does the time feel like it goes by. Like you get disconnected from reality. You lose track of time. As opposed to the Monday Night Raw feeling, let's say, where you look at the clock and you say, oh my God, it is 9.25. I've got over an hour and a half of this crap left to go. You don't get that feeling with Rampage. But this is a good show this week. Starting off with CM Punk versus Daniel Garcia. Now, frankly, I don't get what the big deal about Daniel Garcia is compared to so many other people on the roster. But, hey, some of y'all seem to think he's legit or whatever. Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. I like the interview for the first match this time. Like, they did it for the main event. But I love the fact that they did it here for the first match. You know, this has got CM Punk. It's supposed to feel a little bit bigger. Mark Henry, obviously, still feels out of place in this type of role. Um, but I love the thought of the interview here. I also love CM Punk with the Brian Danielson spin. And that is, if you're not first, fuck that shit. He said, let me be in the highest watched, highest rated segment. Damn Skippy. I ain't main eventing this shit, brother. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. Fuck that shit. I love it. The match itself is okay, but not a masterpiece. I'm seeing Punk work off a little bit more of the ring rust. I don't think he's all the way there. He may never truly be all the way to where he was maybe a decade ago as an in-ring performer, but that doesn't necessarily matter as much. When you're talking about a company that prides itself on the action in the ring and the moves and the athleticism that people can demonstrate, like it's probably okay that Punk quite isn't up to that standard. Forces people to work different styles of matches. But as I'm watching this match... And I know where this is inevitably going to go, to a place where uh, God himself, Ugga, will be incredibly pleased with this quick and efficient disposal of young up-and-coming talent. Like, he would break out <laughs> the shovel to celebrate in this one. <laughs> it dawned on me. We finally have a purpose for CM Punk and AEW. Because it's not this nostalgia lane bullshit. It's not this I'm just happy to be here CM Punk. CM Punk is not great when he's happy. He honestly is best when he comes across, whether it be in wrestling or also in real life, as an unhappy, kind of petulant, brat, miserable ass dude. Like, that's when he's at his best. This happy-go-lucky CM Punk is fun for a little bit, but the novelty has worn off now. You've got a purpose for CM Punk, damn it, and here's what it is. He wants to work with all the young talent, yes, to bury every single fucking one of them. A guy experiencing a midlife crisis, a guy trying to recapture his previous glory, establish that he is bigger than wrestling and nobody in wrestling is better than CM Punk. And he says, fuck the future. The future is now. It's Sting, CM Punk, at Bound for Glory. I threw in that last part, but that's what it should be about. His whole mission should be to destroy the young talent in AEW on his way to the fucking top. Fuck these good feelings, good vibes, CM Punk. Come out there and shit on AEW and the young talent. Come out and shit on the company and what it represents and talk about how you're going to fucking take it over and you're going to do it your way. That, that, ladies and gentlemen, can be interesting, compelling television. you damn right it could. Imagine a heel CM Punk going after a babyface Hangman Page or a babyface Brian Danielson as AEW World Champion. Like, think about the possibilities there. Punk's got a streak going. He should be continuing to run through this young talent because fuck him. He's CM Punk. That's what I want his gimmick and character to be. Am I off the mark here? Because you can't really point to anything else that he's doing that makes any sense right now. Well, other than what, he's going to be Mr. Friday Night? Mr. Rampage? 
That's what CM Punk's going to be because he seems to have a match on Rampage every damn week? No. Have him bury everybody. He wants the top belt. But he could, instead of just going the political way to do it, he wants to earn it because he wants to earn it so that way when he gets up to that top spot, nobody's going to bother trying to knock him off the perch because he's ran through everybody. There's your story. There's your character. There's your gimmick for CM Punk that makes sense. As incredibly unlikely as that would ever be to happen, it would be something different, something interesting with CM Punk. Damn it, I wish they would. The opportunity is right there. Um, you had a match with the tag champions. It's the Claim versus the Lucha Brothers. They, at least the rap was on tape delay uh, in case it had to be cut or edited. I put Max Caster in those environments where you can <laughs> censor if needed, I guess. Um, here's my thing. This is an okay match. And, you know, I look at both of the dudes of the acclaimed and I say in different ways, I see two wrestlers, two talents with some upside that is intriguing. Um, the Lucha Brothers are a good gimmick. They're a good tag team. Personally, for me, their style of in-ring work isn't my cup of tea, transparently. I'm not into the flippy, kicky, spot fest, fuckboy shit, but a lot of AEW fans are, and they're there to appeal to them, and I understand that. And you also look at their get-ups, their mask. Like, these are the types of guys that you should be featuring in some type of way because they're appealing to different de demographics of an audience that is hashtag all egg white wrestling. You need to branch your shit out and not just be made for the white man. So the Lucha Brothers fit perfectly. You've got the mask. That should be a gimmick that you're selling and you can make money off of. Like There is an appeal there. But what you shouldn't be doing is just putting them in random ass matches like this. Your champions, if nothing else, if nothing else, your champions should always be in a meaningful story, always. When you look at AEW right now, the way they're constructed, Kenny Omega should be in an important, meaningful feud. And he kind of is. Your TNT champion, Sammy Guevara, should be in a meaningful, important feud. Dr. Britt Baker should be in a meaningful, important feud. Your tag champions should be in a meaningful, important feud. You can't say that all the champions right now are in meaningful, substantive, important feuds. It's like the thing of, hey, we're going to have the Lucha Brothers win. That's great. And then what? Where's the plan here? They're really not around much other than they just come and wrestle every couple of weeks. That's not how you do a great job of featuring your tag team champions. It isn't. They should be in a meaningful story in a meaningful feud. And please don't fucking tell me they are. Come off of that crap. You know better than that. That's like trying to say CM Punk is in some type of meaningful angle or meaningful story right now. We can clearly see that he's not. I have given you a pathway to where that could happen as unlikely as that would ever be to occur. But... Your tag champ should be featured better than this. Jade Cargill versus Sky Blue is exactly the fucking squash match that it should be. Accentuate Jade's positives. Many, many, many positives. And minimize her weaknesses, her green as goose shit stuff in the ring, of which there are many, many of those. And you could be productive and effective and get to the damn point. But Jade Cargill, Thunder Rosa feud? <laughs> No, that's not me doing that. That is me saying, inject this straight into my veins. Oh, yes, fucking please. Oh, yes, please. Now, do I want it to be over a TDS title? No. But that's what it'd be. Then so be it. I'm ready for it, and I think the fans are too. The main event, FTW Championship Street Fight. I really hate that Brian Cage keeps losing, but here we are. I understand you're kind of in this place where you're trying to disassociate him from Team Taz. You're trying to get past this. But you're having Brian Cage lose too much. This company does not do a great job of booking their bigger men. Brian Cage has more to bring to the table and should be able to bring more to the table. But he has to be put in a position where he can. I have no problem with getting him away from Team Taz. Like, yes, I agree long term to be better. 
But if you're asking me, do I have a ton of confidence that this company is going to do right by Brian Cage? Oh, fuck. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, as far as Ricky Starks, he absolutely should be a star for AEW. If he's not already, he will be in a main event star sometime sooner rather than later. Especially as a babyface, let's hurry up and fucking get there. Tired of the excuses being made for AEW. When you look at most of the prominently featured black wrestlers in this company, they almost all have to be on the evil side of the fence. And sure, you're going to bring up a red velvet. Okay, exception to the rule. You're going to bring up a Dante Martin. Not exactly a prominent player here. So Lee Johnson, again, not a prominent player. But the ones that they've invested the most time in, the ones they feature most prominently, and that are black wrestlers, male or female, are overwhelmingly on the villain side of the fence. I realize for all leg white wrestling that you're appealing to a largely white fan base and white demographic, so you're doing certain things. Whether it's conscious or unconscious, I can't say, but it certainly appears to be conscious at least somewhat. You know, black wrestlers can be heroes too. Just saying. So hurry up and get Ricky Starks over to the babyface side of shit. Or Jade Cargill. Or some of the others. Powerhouse Hobbs. There you go. And fucking make Team Taz a babyface faction at this point. Hell. So many people cream their jeans when they see Hook every week. Like the elements are there. Like if you really look at Team Taz right now and even removing Brian Cage from the equation. Like why would you want to boo Ricky Starks? Why would you want to boo Powerhouse Hobbs? They don't need to be villains. They don't have to be villains. And they don't work as well on the heel side of the fence. Take this group and make them babyface. The match was good. But like I said, really wish you wouldn't have put Brian Cage in a spot where he has to keep losing. But nonetheless, here we are. Uh, but in general, pretty good rampage this week. It really was. I want to see more of this on a more consistent basis. I like the pacing of the show. I like the flow of the show. And you got in a lot of stuff, but none of it felt rushed. You got in a lot of stuff, but none of it felt overwhelming. So not a ton for me to complain with in term, about in terms of the actual execution of Rampage this week. I am curious to see how this is going to work out next week, though, because technically the next AEW show on primetime cable television is going to be Rampage next Friday night because... Dynamite will be on Saturday nights. And my hope is, my hope is, is that somebody in this company will get Tony Khan to stop posting this Markish ass shit on Twitter. Anyways, that's a battle for another day.